uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, took the, the film on Sunday. Um, you know, the uh, part that I thought our guys, I gave our coaches and our players, you know, they invested a lot last week in the preparation to go over there and um, give everything they could. Uh, liked our work on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, you know, first half was one of those things that just uh, couldn't couldn't get out of that field position battle. And uh, again, it kind of unfolded as we as we talked about after the game. But um, you know, I did in retrospect, there were a lot of guys that uh, you know you get caught in a moment. You don't realize how many guys had to pop in there. You know, to lose Yelda, to lose Austin Cantrell, two of your more formidable players on offense, have guys step into it. I thought. Uh, Will Gregg, and in addition to Jeremy Patton, uh, really stepped it up. And Jack Krause, it was actually a blessing to get Jack back out there. He'd missed a couple games of concussion. So that was there. We just uh, got to continue to find more players, um, you know, and, and, and give us better relief in the, in the second half and, and do a better job as coaches as well. From an injury standpoint, uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the, the most significant, Ty Clary, um, uh, is probably looking at a six-week recovery. He, he uh, um, sprained his MCL. Um, nothing surgical. Uh, uh, Fortunately for that, nothing surgical, but unfortunate that it takes a long time for that baby to repair. So the MCL will get itself back in there. Um, uh, Yelda, uh, it's the other ankle. It wasn't the ankle that he injured earlier in the year. It was the other ankle, uh, maybe a little bit more significant, but do expect him to get back um, later in this week. Don't know if we'll have him for practice uh, tomorrow, but expect him back out there, and I know he's doing everything he can. Austin Cantrell, all the x-rays and all the further tests were all negative. He did you know, suffer a significant bruise uh, on the outside part of the knee, which made it real tender to plant and drive, which uh, prohibited him from coming back in. Uh, we kept C.J. O'Grady at home um, last weekend, so he uh, was able to actually stay here, get treatments with some of our medical people here during the course of the weekend, and is, um, I think, full goal, going to be back with us tomorrow. Um, looked good yesterday, was popping around, so uh, those Four significant guys offensively, and then also on defense, Drake Coley um, was cleared for the game. Um, he played a little bit of Horace on special teams. I think just the way the game unfolded, uh, you know, Paul uh, didn't put him in there, um, but but uh, uh, should be all right this week moving forward as, as healthy as he's been the last three or four weeks uh, as we got going. So, um, uh, Austin, uh, really no no issues. Uh, you know, I, I grabbed him on Sunday, said, how do you feel? And he said, really the only soreness I have is in my legs, uh, just being, being out there running around and, and playing a a game as long as he did. Um, uh, that was really the only thing I saw, nothing significant in the shoulder, and I think he'll be back better this week more than ever. Uh, then obviously in the same room, um, non, non-injury, but obviously the news of Cole, uh, uh, Cole Kelly. Uh, um, uh, here's where I'm at. Uh, I, I, one of the things I put out there yesterday, I hadn't even been able to talk to Cole or his parents yet, so I just obviously uh, put out news that we were made aware of it. He's got a court date on Wednesday. He's uh, indefinitely suspended from our program. This week, he will not be uh, involved with us and will not play on Saturday. Um, he's got a court date on Wednesday, um, depending on the information out of there. Uh, he's been pretty honest and upfront with me uh, all the way through. Obviously, there's a, a, a court proceedings going on, so I won't comment about the specifics other than uh, he's very disappointed. We were disappointed. Um, it's a learning lesson that I hope he uh, takes, uh, takes full advantage of, as well as our team. Um, you know, when it happened on Sunday morning, my, re- my first reflection is, um, is he safe? Is, is there anybody else um, uh, involved? And in, in, is there everybody self safe uh, in the uh, in the entire incident? So that was a positive, but uh, obviously something could could come very very negative out of those situations. So an awareness factor there for our guys. Um, uh, you know the the part that uh, um, I think he has to understand is you, you know not only to be an Arkansas Razorback, but be a quarterback that started games here is a very very big deal and um, social media and everything else around it. He's going to be held to a higher standard. Um, the blessings that you give uh, can also be your biggest burden. So he's going to have to do a lot of growing up in a short amount of time. Had conversations with his parents. And we're all on board moving forward. Um, and and uh, for however long the suspension, it, for through this week for sure, through Saturday, I think he's got to lead, understand what, what life can be like without football. Um, so uh, And also address all the other issues. If, if he does all that, we'll kind of address it uh, at that point moving forward. So. Really, other than that, we jump into uh, our Mississippi State preparation. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, as well as myself, came back Saturday night, watched that game, and, and watched them go toe-to-toe with Alabama. Um, and a really, really good football team. Our quarterback is a, a very, very talented player. We've known that uh, competing against him. Uh, they made a tremendous spike uh, on defense as well from, from a year ago with the new philosophy, new, new way of doing things. So uh, very, tr- very tough task on Saturday, but excited to be back home. Um, and I've really tried to emphasize, and, and 
I think our kids have bought into it. Everybody wants to jump to, you know, the possibility of six and all that goes into it. The only way you get to six is to get to five. And, and that's Mississippi State this week. Um, uh, the only thing we have in front of us is our preparation for tomorrow. Uh, we'll focus on that, get to Wednesday, get to Thursday, get to Friday, um, and then 11 o'clock kick on Saturday. So with that, open up for questions. So Cole, you're not in meetings or practice or anything? Who's that? Cole? No, he was yesterday. Uh, it was all just coming so fast. We started our meetings. I wanted to keep him. I kind of wanted him to face everybody, to be quite honest. It um, would have been easy to throw him out of the building yesterday, but I wanted him to uh, have to be around, have to answer questions. And then uh, from uh, this point where we made the decision after uh, talking, I didn't get a chance to talk to his mom until early this morning. So, uh, yeah, he won't be involved in anything here in the building uh, this week. Oh, absolutely. Um, when we remove anybody, you know, we commonly do that. Sometimes you guys know about it, don't know about it. Sometimes kids are redshirted, so it doesn't become a story. But uh, we never take away three things. We never take away academic or academic support, never take away uh, the medical support or anything that go into it, and also the, the services that we provide for them here in the building. Yeah, they're, you know, the one thing about Dan and his crew, they kind of just stick to their, you know, their way of doing things. Um, uh, even when, when he had Dak and, and obviously now with Fitzgerald, they just uh, um, very, very good at what they do. They understand sets. They understand looks. They try to get you in certain formations uh, to get matchup issues. Um, when their quarterback is playing well, they play very, very well. And, and uh, that's kind of been the case, uh, uh, you know, for, for them this year. Um, uh, again, to be in our environment, to be in a, a crowd, hopefully, that will be a little bit uh, uh, loud, a little bit uh, 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 excited would be a good thing for us overall. It looks like they lived and died with the blitz, helping some, and then they came at the end. What do you think the same stuff might come? Yeah, I think that, you know, there was a little bit more in that game than others. Um, and and uh, I think any time you play Bama, I think you probably – one of the things you, you realize when you're, when you're studying that film or who's playing against them, that there are some changes that usually go into that game. People – you know, just approach them a little bit different. Um, but yeah, they uh, overloaded uh, certain sides. They brought good pressure, um, uh, took advantage of some looks down the field. They're able to uh, run the ball effectively a little bit. Um, so there's there's definitely uh, the time of possession was a huge, huge factor in that game. I know the coaches don't do this. It's a brilliant media mind. It seems like at SEC media day, states always pick last or next to last. They almost always do better than that. Well, do you think they're just kind of one of those underrated programs that maybe start with? Well, you know, Dan's done a tremendous job there. Um, last year, you know, you look at um, one of the things, obviously, the situation that we're in, all right, we're a 4-6 and six team. One of the things that I, you know, we got to move forward. we got to go forward. And, um, you know, they're a team last year. I remember when we beat them, because of that game, uh, you know, they were cast into a five-win season, which actually put them in the bowl in Florida, which they had success with that propelled them to where they are today, you know, and uh, a sign of those things that can come. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, uh, you know, just overall, they got they got good players. We we compete. We don't compete much in Mississippi, but we compete against Mississippi State quite a bit in outlying areas. You know, in Texas, uh, Louisiana, uh, uh, Florida. Um, so uh, we know the type of players they are, and and uh, and obviously the results they get. We'd like to get depth. You know, this is a big weekend for us in recruiting. We got a, a 11 o'clock kick, which is actually good for us in recruiting. We have uh, uh, quite a big number of defensive players that that will be in this weekend that could impact us in a, in a short fashion. Um, uh, so it's an exciting weekend for that. But I think w what we've realized is as as you get deeper into this thing, you know, when when it's just one guy here, it's one guy there. Um, uh, it, its effect overall um, it takes place with special teams, but also in the duration of the course of the game. And um, that, that unfortunately is where it done us way too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, anytime you have the, the ability to throw and, 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 and run, I mean, he, he can do both well. He's got a strong arm. They, they got great concepts. Um, He's a, he's a big guy, so he's not just a one-on-one a -on -one tackle. You, you know, you can't just assume that just because you have someone assigned to him that's going to be a down ball. He, he can really do some special things in the run game. Um, very composed. Uh, I know there's a p picture of him Saturday right during the game where he, I believe he scored the touchdown, if it was, and he was thrown up over on the sideline, you know, for whatever reason. I mean, he's either A, engaged in the game, got hit, whatever it was, but he, he didn't show any signs coming back in the next period. I think he's just a... A very tough competitor, and, and um, you can tell the way Dan talked about him early in his career that he was excited about where he can go, and it's, it's evident in his play. Your downfield passing hasn't been as, uh, he's dropped off a 
Yeah. What are the causes of that, and how much are you missing being able to do that? Yeah, you know, well, first we got to connect on when we got them, um, and and if we got to throw the ball a little bit more vertically, we have to. Um, you know, there was a little bit of both on Saturday. Um, uh, I, I, I know there was a couple as well in the uh, Coastal Carolina game, but it's one thing to have those shots, and you know, you definitely want to take them. As a defense coordinator, I always used to, you know, used to chart. Uh, how many shots you know go past 20 yards? You know that you have to have an awareness of that you're trying to defend, and the number of times that happens. And uh, you know, for us to to get the respect to maybe loosen up the coverage a little bit that could help us in the run game, we definitely have to have X number of shots down the field. And uh, Dan's done a great job of that over time. And, and obviously, we have to connect on him. I don't really know Todd. Uh, I just have tremendous respect everywhere he's been. Um, he's not a guy. I don't I, you know? He's not a. Um, uh, a guy that brings attention to him, so you know, some guys are, are self promoters or whatnot, and, and he just seems to be a guy um, throughout his history, just uh, goes about his business. He'll several people that have worked with him, against him. Um, you see his product, and it's very, 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 very sound. Um, it's not just, you know, throwing up a lot of different uh, schemes and whatnot. There's a method to it, and, and very respectful. Yeah, I. I, I I think there's a little bit, a little bit of everything. You also work with the receivers, you know, so maybe, uh, you know, take a routine one. There's two jumped out my mind, you know, throw the, so the throw to TJ was just a little bit behind, and, you know, and, and if you hit it clean, you maybe had a bigger, bigger play. But uh, then there was a, a play, if you guys remember, Dion was dragging across the middle. Um, it was a first down catch, but if he hits him in stride, you know, it can be there. And the fortunate thing, I've seen Austin throw those balls a lot. Uh, I've seen him have great success. So, um, you, you feel it's there, but I, I, I do. That was the first time he played in a long time, and in a, in a, it's not exactly the most easy place to, uh, to to cue into, and especially when we started him up backed up. Uh, but I, I think you'll see a big spike in him this week. Yeah. I do. I've liked Will since day one. I think he had to uh, go through some things, but he's been absolutely awesome from. Uh, week one to where he is, just kind of lines up, does business. I've thrown him in on some special teams. Uh, what I was really happy for him to see, he was anxious uh, to get out on that on that tight end screen route. You know, he was a little quick, uh, but made some really nice things happen with the football, set up some nice blocks. Um, Red and was great with ball security. I think Barry is very, very um, pleased with his growth as well, you know, and, and the good news is I think you're not even uh, beginning to see, you know, he's a little bit leaner than when he came in. You know, he changed his body and uh, I think you're not even seeing close to what what he could be. Well, I don't. I, I get the question, but I don't think that way. Uh, you just focus on task at hand. Um, it's probably a little bit easier than than than. I, I don't think there's any doubt of what we're doing. So I mean, that's just. When you talk to recruits, when you talk to the players, when you talk to the parents, um, people obviously care about you, say certain things, but it's it's full ghost, full speed. Um, never seen anything to tell me different. Um, uh, I know what we've built. I know what we can be. It was kind of a, a on Sunday, I always try to um, take a look at, at uh, you know, what our two deep is going into this week and, and just the amount of volume of players offensively and defensively they have our freshmen and sophomores is awesome, especially defensively. Uh, to have so many seniors that will be back next year, it's, it's an exciting time. No. Um, you know, Butch, uh, Tennessee, and, and everything that those guys do. I remember when we were back up there, what was that, two years ago, three years ago, there was discussions then, you know. So uh, it's a different program. It's a different feel. It's a different thing. Um, uh, I think the part that we do here is we try to do our best as we can every day. Um, know that wins got to come. I get it. I understand it. I know we want to have a lot more wins. Um, uh, I want to have a lot more wins. Our players want to have a lot more wins. Administration, fans, everybody. Um, and we'll get there. I, I really, uh, I know people don't want to hear it, but the things that our kids have battled through and the way that the kids have uh, uh, responded to the adversity that they've been hitting the mouth with, especially again during the course of the game, there's no flinch, there's no regression. They're just. Hey, next man up, let's get through this, and we'll persevere. And, and that's, a, that's a really fun group to work with. And, and uh, when we get over that hump, that'll make it that much better. You mentioned the recurrence. Are you still looking at that 15? No, it's probably going up a little bit just because I think we'll have some guys that have early grad. Um, uh, um, next Saturday, we'll honor seniors, and there's probably as many as two, uh, um, maybe even more guys that uh, 
uh, not significant guys, not guys that are in the, in, in the starting lineup, but guys that maybe have been um, backup players during their career that could possibly get out of here and might explore that option. Um, so that the, the number might increase. I think we can get probably up to a number of maybe 20 guys. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about him? Yeah, you know, so he got a lot of reps last week. You know, it's, uh, Cole, like I said, got limited reps on Wednesday. So uh, Ty got all the reps on Tuesday, uh, half the reps on Wednesday, and then took all the reps with the twos on Thursday. Um, had a package for him that uh, if Cole wasn't able to go, he was going to take over that look. Um, uh, Ty's uh, got a lot of talent. Uh, he's an engaged football player. Probably no one better with a football like you or an understanding of our offense. So uh, I'd. I'd, I'd you know, Dan and I both discuss. You know that uh, if there's a way to get him involved in the game, we'd like to do that. Um, but just to keep his uh, his spirit going. But you know, in big picture thinking, you know, like I told Ty and Cole at the beginning of the year, and then when we made the decision to go with Cole, uh, obviously when when Austin got hurt, uh, no matter what happened with Cole and Ty during the course of the season, when we got to the spring, it was going to be an open battle. You know, um, uh, I told those guys back then. You know, they both have. Uh, tremendous upside and got a, a great deal to do. Now, Cole got some valuable experience, there's no doubt, but uh, going into spring drills, those guys will be in an open competition. You guys have gone over 100 points combined the last two games with Mississippi State. What, what has gone into this such high scoring affairs? Well, um, execution. Um, maybe uh, uh, defensively, we didn't execute the way we needed to, uh, on, on, at least on our end. Um, uh, but it's just been kind of one of those, one of those games. Um, and uh, I think back to the year before that, though, it was a real low score, right? And, and, and uh, if, it, if I remember right, it was uh, the last time before we went, maybe it been three years ago, but the, the last time we were over there when before this last time, uh, it, was, it was a little bit of a low score, at least late in the fourth quarter. Um, so it, it, it's just all these games, I, I think as soon as you start thinking that you're going to have a low score, it becomes a high score. As soon as you think it's going to be a high score, it turns into a little bit of a little different look. So uh, that's life in the SEC. Good job, human, human encyclopedia. Um, can, can you, can you yeah, I think it's been well documented. You know, yeah. So uh, my first year as a head coach, we went twelve and one, and and uh, all tw all thirteen games were at eleven o'clock. All all every one of them. Um, so I was indoctrinated early on. Um, uh, in the Big Ten, they're a little bit more prevalent than they are here. Uh, so, but when we got here, we we went for a stretcher. We didn't have one for a long time. So, really, the only thing different, we bring them over early on Thursday mornings. Um, it's a little bit obviously earlier wake up call on Saturday, but uh, the game time still. We our meal uh, is still four hours out from kickoff, so we'll have a meal about seven. Uh, this is at eleven ten, so we'll have our pregame meal around that seven fifteen range. Um, again, for us in recruiting, it works out. Just when you get a kid here on campus, it's actually those 11 o'clock games are good because you can get a full day with them on Friday and then after the game on Saturday, you got a lot of potential to be with them and their parents. So, um, you know, everybody would probably say 2.30 is ideal, but from a logistics and working environment, 11 o'clock is pretty, pretty on time. You get to that 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock when the game's done, everybody's already, you know, uh, it's, it's by the time the coaches get done, it's everything's out the door and, and uh, a little bit limited. So the 11 o'clock game is, is very functional for us. Right, everybody in the SEC West expects to win right now. Yeah. And because Mississippi State has, has been playing well the last few years, it makes it extra tough, I suppose. Mm -hmm. What's it like um, being a part of, a, a part of that? Um, well, every week is what it is. Um, uh, you know, you see stats. I remember my first year, the stats, and I saw the second year. And then uh, uh, during our bye week, someone put out, uh, I saw the, uh, during my five years of being here, we have the number one rated toughest schedule in the, in the SEC during the time since I've been here. Number one, SEC East and West. Um, somebody's got to be number one, I guess. Uh, so uh, it is what it is. Uh, it, it obviously doesn't make life a little bit easier, but uh, um, you play the schedule that's in front of you. I came into the uh, came into here expecting to do what we're going to do, and, and the matter of circumstances are what it is. You know, sometimes strength of schedule and all those things depend a little bit about your non-conference, who's playing well at the time, and all that goes uh, into it there. But uh, to battle the way we have, to put the product on the field, to, to have our kids, you know, it was a big deal to hear about Cole on Sunday just because it doesn't happen very often. You know what I mean? Um, and for me as a head coach, that that means something. It means a lot. It means a lot to our parents. Uh, it means a lot to the people that support our program. Um, and, and, and that's the things that probably keep you going. It was a tough weekend anyway with the game. And then you hear about Cole and you think, like, oh, man, what else can happen? 
Yeah, it, I get it, you know, but on the same account as a head coach, you can't really flinch more and, you know, just reading it, get that initial thing, okay, what do we got to do? So, I mean, literally had to hop on, you have to notify the people, um, have a plan of attack, uh, what you're going to do, how you're going to handle it. I mean, it really just, you instantly flip that switch to go into what you got to do um, and, and obviously plan out our Sunday too because we meet with our players on Sunday. So how, how we're going to, I kept them in the building on Sunday because I wanted to be around our guys. You know, I wanted to see them and face them. Um, and I didn't actually get a chance to see him until after our team meeting uh, on Sunday to discuss what we're going to do move forward. So uh, a little bit gets to be timing, but um, uh, it, 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 uh, it's one of those deals you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it quickly, understand what the situation is, and, and capitalize on the learning moment. So you probably got some feedback from him having gone through the day talking to his teammates. What, how's he, how's he well, he was very quiet. Um, one of the few times I've seen Cole quiet, right? Um, um, and, and he, he, he's going to handle it the right way. I think he, he agreed to all the terms that I laid out in front of him. Um, uh, when you're in these positions, I think you, the, the biggest thing, like I said, is you have to, you have to take it and, and run and learn. You know, sometimes when you're 19, 20, you, you don't feel like you got to hear these lessons. And, and I want to make sure they absorb it and learn it. Um, and and uh, again, great discussions with his family. And, and uh, Cole has a very bright future. And I want that, you know, this shouldn't be the definition of his career. This should be one of those moments that shows who he is. You know, I encouraged him to uh, take the next uh, opportunity and the rest of the opportunities that lay in front of him over the next three years to define uh, what his reaction is to this moment. You know, um, and, and these things pop up. On, uh, like I said, fortunately, they haven't popped up a lot in our, our program, but uh, it, it is what it is. We have to address it and, and move forward. I do love the math that you do. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it's. Uh, it, 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 I think that's the part that probably, uh, um, if you could just pick people to grasp that, that's the that's the toughest thing. And in, and I tell you what, in recruiting, you sell it. You sell you sell that so much in recruiting about what you're able to come here and do. Like uh, again, these kids coming this weekend are are, are players that will be able to play immediately. You know, um, either JC transfer or somebody that can be eligible to come in in January, and you sell them on the effect that they can have in a short fashion and. Um, uh, I think that's that's the part you can't sit around and say, "Well, it was me about it." You got to use it as a selling point, and that's what we've been, what we've been able to do. Yeah, there's, you know, there was three big plays that really, you know, really sealed our fate a little bit in the second half, um, and and yeah, they were a little bit, uh, a little bit. I think uh, you know, Paul's going to be in here in a little bit, we'll be able to share with you. I think uh, a little bit of a scheme, but also a little bit of technique, a little bit of a individual. Uh, uh, correction on a certain play. Um, credit to the offense for them being able to get it, but um, it's just tough when you see the tail of two. And actually, in the first half, the field position that our defense took over, uh, the way they battled through that, and only uh, and well to come out of there as a seven-seven tie was 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 a true credit to them. But uh, again, uh, football games don't last thirty minutes; they last sixty. So we got to be able to figure it out. Yeah. So was that a bad game for Blake Johnson? What's that? Blake Johnson. Was that a bad game for, for Blake? Johnson? Yeah, what, what I think we had seven punts right. Um, uh, three were, were were above or, or, or beyond what you know. We have a, a certain number that Barry gives them that that, that is pretty real. Uh, but three, and that, there was three that weren't. You know, and uh, coming off the heels of the week before to drop one. I mean, he he's a kid that's got again tremendous upside. We have to get him to be consistent. I don't need a punter that can hit it. You know, two out of four. I need a punter to hit it four out of four. And and he's young. Again, there's another sophomore. Uh, that uh, has got a very, he, he's uh, very, very talented, but he's got to come through and become a more consistent performer on every opportunity. Was that? Patrick did, yes. I was talking about my shave. I was like, oh, no. Thank you.